Hi, I'm Pete from Lenigot Studio and under the coronavirus and the lockdown, doing things to keep myself entertained. Can't go out and play at Beltane tonight, the fire festival. And so what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to build myself a new staff. So to start with, to build a staff, you're going to need several, several basic components. I'm going to need staff. Some wooden dowels to fit inside the end of the staff, which I'm going to screw into to attach the wick. And the wick, this is a Kevlar fabric, it's about three millimeters thick, and this is 100 millimeters wide. And I think I'm going to do a 60 centimeter wrap, so that's 600 millimeter wraps around the end of these. And so that's a dowels wrap. Uh, so the so it doesn't slip. I'm going to use some um, some grip. Now this grip is easily available, lots of different colours, lots of different styles, off eBay, Amazon, whatever, sports shops, and it's racket grip for a tennis racket. It's very good, very easy to use. But we'll come back to that. And uh, but also, I want to uh, I want to insulate more of the staff. I don't want the grip to just be between there and there. I want the grip to go right up to the edge of the uh, wick. The trouble is that's inflammable. So I'm going to use some silicon tape to, to do the final bit of the wrap. This has got a burning temperature of something like 230 degrees C, which is well within the limits of what I need. And so I'll do grip, then I'll do silicon, and then I will do the wigs in exactly the opposite order. So first part of the process is I'm going to need to cut up some wig. One of the fundamental things about a fire staff or any staff is it should be well balanced. Now a fire staff is a bit more difficult because you have a weight at each end and those weights must be kept the same. And um, the wicks will be screwed on with some self-tapping wood screws. I'm going to drill some holes through and then put the screws in and that will hold the wick in. But first of all, I'm gonna need some wick. I got this from a company in Edinburgh called Cascade Juggling, very friendly people. And uh, the purpose of the wick, obviously being called a wick, is to soak in the fuel. And when you light the staff, it is the fuel that's burning, not the wick. So this has to be fire resistant, but, uh, but absorbent. So this Kevlar, this Kevlar, Rick is absolutely perfect. It's actually designed for it. Um, now, the size of a wick, how fat the wick is, will help control the length of time which the staff burns for. More wick, more fuel. Also, longer piece of wick means a larger surface area, so bigger flames. So obviously, the more of this you can use, the, uh, the more impressive the staff's going to be. Uh, the minimum size I'd go for is uh, 50 centimetres and the maximum size I'd go for is going to be, ooh, let me think, uh, maybe 75. I'm going to do a compromise on this one, I'm going to do about 60. The first thing I'm going to need to do is to, to put a wooden core in here so that when I screw in the wicks they'll stay in place. I've got some uh, doweling here. It's supposed to be exactly the same in external diameter as internal diam as the internal diameter of the pipe. In this case, it's not. So I'm going to have to do a compromise. And so what I'll do is I'll use some of this, which is a masking tape. And I'll coat this in masking tape before it goes in. It will the masking tape won't burn because to have fire you need fuel, heat, and oxygen. Inside the metal tube, obviously, it's not going to get any oxygen, so that'd be perfectly fine. So, to demonstrate what I mean, is there, I've got slag. So I'll build up this. And everything you want to do when building a staff is you want to be as neat and precise as you can be. 
because the neater you are, the better the staff's going to be, the longer it's going to hold together, and the better balance it's going to have. Uh, at the end of it, once I've made the staff, I'll show you how, well, during the making of the staff, I'll show you how to find the balance point. And there's lots of techniques of doing this, but the more accurate you can find the centre point, the easier. Because if you know where the centre point is when you're spinning, of course, it means that you have better balance. If you have better balance, you have a better spin, looks more impressive and there's a lot less effort. So that's my first layer of uh, painter's masking tape. Still a little bit loose. So another layer. Exactly the same process. Lay the tape flat. Put the dowel at the end. Carefully and accurately. <laughs> and later, carefully and accurately, put the tape on. I don't want any bubbles in this tape because when I try and put the, this in, I suspect this is going to be too thick once it's got the two layers of tape on, so I'm going to have to peel back some. But when you put the tape in, if you've got bubbles, the bubbles will catch on the internal edge there of my pipe. That's perfect. I'm rotating it round in the direction that I've rolled the tape to try and get the least damage to it. And because it's a firm fit now, one bit of time sweet. And now, this is going to be quite hard because I'm doing this left-handed. I'm just going to persuade it gently with a persuader. And make it flush. So, that's the first side prepared, ready for the wick. Unfortunately, the wick is not ready for it. Now, what did I say? I said I'm going to do about a 60 millimeter, sorry, 60 millimeter, that's six centimeters, 60 centimeter wig. And the exact size doesn't matter. As I said before, the more weight, the bigger the flame, the longer the burn. But it doesn't actually matter as long as it's exactly the same on both sides. Remember, we're trying to keep this as balanced as possible. Uh, I could measure this in inches. I will for any Americans who might be watching. By the way, if you're American and watching, it is the 21st century. Metric is the way to go. When you start talking about three and seven eighths of an inch or five sixteenths or seven whatevers, it's a little bit harder to uh, be precise. With metric, you can just say, oh, it's 10, it's nine, it's eight and a half. Sorry, 85. So I much prefer using a metric to imperial. Maybe I'll have something to hold that down just to make everything clear. We're up to exactly 60. And this wick has a weave. It has a thick thread which goes backwards and forwards, a thick cord. And it has an interwoven cord, sets of interwoven cords to hold it together. Which means that when I actually mark this off, I can actually mark exactly 60 off. And rather than try and cut through the uh, thick thread, I can cut through the thinner cords and get a nice straight edge. Now Kevlar, what do they say? It's something like a 10 times the tensile strength of steel. So when you have your good leather working scissors, what you don't want to do is use them on Kevlar because it will damage the scissors. And as I said, needs must when the devil drives though. Check the measurement again, 60. If I could go out and get some uh, shears, ow, this is quite hard work. I'm keeping the Kevlar right in the, the, the call it uh, hinge, hinge, as close to the hinge as possible. 
uh, because the more the lever, the shorter that is, the more force I can put on. This times that. If you're using your friend's or your partner's scissors to do this, don't, they will hate you. I will have to sharpen these up afterwards, which will be another learning curve because I don't know how to sharpen them up. So there's my first wick made. Stupidly, going to check it again. Sixty centimeters. That's awful short. So before I actually, before I actually cut the next one to match, I'm just going to roughly roll this round and check to see how wide the final wick's going to be. Because this material might actually be thinner than the material I used last time. Now, what would be really nice if I had an extra pair of hands to hold the wick down. I don't. Thanks, messenger. So here's my extra hand. Put a piece of masking tape. Same width as the, uh, slightly less width than the uh, wick. Put the masking tape half on the wick. And this is very important. I need the wick to be at right angles to the staff so when I roll it I can get a neat roll and I want the edge of the wick to be at the end. Now there is a way of correcting this afterwards but we'll get to it when it's afterwards not before and as I said I want this to be as tight as possible and as neat as possible. Now one thing I find annoying about the wick is it may be incredibly strong but you can kind of twist it a bit because it's woven and so you can get your wick coming out in a sort of cone shape which is something I obviously don't want. I say obviously, I don't mean obviously, I mean it is something you don't want. The neater everything is, the better it is. Now I'm going to show you this wrong first, and I'm going to show you what to actually do with it. Now if I screw the wick down like that, the edge of this can fray. The edge of this frays is going to come apart. Oh, that's looking so good though. Also, I want everything to be as balanced as possible. I can see the start of the wick as the spiral goes down. I think it starts there. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold over the edge of the wick. Now some people will fold it back to here, but I'm going to take it way back. The reason why I'm going to do that is because the final roll around it is going to be two layers of wig. I'll do a quick rough test and see where we end up. Now this is where my double wick starts and this is where my double wick ends. Because my double wick ends here, I've actually got four wick here, unbalanced staff. So I need this to be further round, which means this has to be shorter, which means when I bring this back, I bring this back and I'm going to take it much too short because it's going to be easier to make it longer.
Oh, if you're doing any work with aluminium beforehand, see if I pull the little sharp bits of aluminium, because they can end up as splinters in your hand, which you're not going to want. Now, the tighter you can make the wig, it becomes less absorbent, but it means the wick lasts longer. And it's a less sloppy finish, so you less you get less uh, spray from the whip. Whip, whip. No, that's another tutorial. If I get round to that one, less spray from the staff. And don't be afraid to do this as often as you have to to get it right. So there's where my double ends. I took a mark where my double ends. No, I can't because I've scored and adjusted. There's where my double ends, and there's where my other double ends. So I've taken it nowhere near far enough back. So I've taken about twice as much of the distance that I had there. One day I should do the sums on this and say, oh, well, if it's this far out, all you have to do is add this extra. I'm going the wrong way because now I've got from here to here so out again shorten just doing a rough check now it's closer shorten again It's worth spending time on this piece. piece. I mean, this is your actual business end of your uh, staff. Have a set whip again. It's a little bit shorter. Double end, double end. It's almost there. There, double end, double end. Could take it maybe a strand shorter. When the screws goes in, that's gonna be fine. Let's take it a strand shorter. I'm taking it right back now. Now I've got the distance, I think, correct. I'm taking it right back to the beginning. So I can make sure the inner, the inner row is as tight as I can get it and as straight as I can get it It's the right length, but see I've got a little bit of um, a lip there. Let's take that back a little bit. Now I'm going to squeeze it and take it round and see if I can just pull it a little bit tighter. As I said before, now's the time to have an extra hand. And your masking tape, first of all, it's very cheap. Second, it's paper, so it's safe to burn. I use this basically for my laser to mount pieces on my laser so they don't move when I'm cutting. Let's try and 
make sure that's exactly perfect. As tight as I can get it. And breathe. Now, one of the reasons why I'm why I'm attempting to open this tape up, one of the reasons why I'm taping it up is when I actually fit this wick, I want it to stay tight. I'm going to have to drill holes through the wick because it's Kevlar. I can't just, I could just put the screw through, but I can't put the screw through the aluminium. So I have to drill a hole through it. If I drill the hole through the aluminium first before I put the wick on, then I won't be able to find the, the holes. So when I put the screws in, I'll be screwed. So again, the extra hand, a good distance in, so it doesn't slip off like that. And be generous with your tape because tape costs tiny bits of pennies. But I want this wick to last as long as possible, so the better I make it, So that's my first wick in place. Obviously, if I lit this, the paper would burn off and it'll all come undone. So next job is gonna be mounting it with screws. On 100 millimeter wick, I'd want to use three screws, I'm guessing. And these are self-tapping with screws. And I'm using cup washers because I want to distribute the force where the screw goes in. And a screw head is only this size and a washer. Oh, it's a counter, countersunk screw. Uh, uh, because it's counter skunk, counter sunk screw, which I think should be a tongue twister. Uh, because it's counter sunk screw, it's got a, a sloping edge on it and the wick could work past the sloping edge and then it start coming undone and that'd be embarrassing. Putting this on not only changes that size of grip up to a massive that size which is about four or five times the area it also distributes the force and grips more of the the wick and any damage which has happened to the wick when you've drilled through it will be held in place by this so the wick will not fray Okay, I'm now going to drill the through the wick to put the screws in and the idea is I want the screws I want to drill through all of the aluminium I want to drill a bit into the wood and I don't want I want the holes to be smaller than the screws uh, so I've measured my drill bit I know you can read the measurement off the drill bit but I always believe in measuring things rather than trusting what they say. So my drill bit is 3.93 millimeters, four millimeters. Sorry, my screw is four millimeters. My drill bit is 3.2 millimeters. So I've got a little bit of extra space, a little bit of extra thickness on the drill on the screws and that's for the thread so the shaft of it will go through the shaft will go through but the actual cutting edges on the screw will cut into the aluminium which means I don't need the dowel but the first thing I'm going to do is before I've tightened up the drill I'm going to measure how long the drill should be coming out you can see that's too long because it's going into the other side of the aluminium. And that's going well into the wood. So just a little bit further in. Check that they're not on hammer. Christ, that would be embarrassing. That's going to be fine. And before you 
drill, make sure you tighten it up. And put your drill key back in the case. It's horrible when you come to use your drill and you find out you've not got a key for it and you can't use the drill. Okay, I'm not going to drill right at the edge because I have the thickness, not the thickness, the diameter of the washer. So I want to bring it in a little bit. So what I'll do is I'll put a washer on the edge and leave it maybe two strands free, maybe one strand free. The mark where I want that hole to be drilled. Be frank, it doesn't have to be 100% accurate. As I said, the closer it is, the better. And just now, I actually think I can go a little bit further in. So I'll redraw that. Another thing I'm going to do is when I drill through this, don't know if it helps, but I heard this, if you reverse the drill when you're going through the Kevlar, it kind of pushes the Kevlar out of the way. I'm still going to get some bits of Kevlar in this, and this drill is going to get wasted. I'm hoping it's still sharp enough after the last staff I made, otherwise I'll have to go and find another drill bit. But we'll see. So I put the drill into reverse. I put my first hole through. And the important thing is going to be keeping it 90 degrees down, 90 degrees that way. So I can get a nice clean drill through. So, pardon my, ow. Now, if you've got a friend with you, this is a great time to have them around. And if you haven't got a friend with you, it's called lockdown. So now I've reversed the drill, sorry, not reversed it, put it in the correct direction so it can cut into the aluminium. And there's very little Kevlar come out of that. So the less Kevlar that comes out, the better it's going to be. So yeah, it's screwing through the um, it's screwing through the Kevlar perfectly easily, but unfortunately, it's got to cut into the aluminium, so I'm gonna need some force on it. So rather than use a normal screwdriver, if you're big and strong, you can use a normal screwdriver. I'm gonna use a cheap socket set with a drill bit in it. Sorry, with a screw bit in it, an Allen screw, because these are Allen, an Allen screwdriver bit. Uh, an important thing when you're using an Allen screw is to make sure you use the right size. If it's too small, when I drill it, when I screw it in, it can slip and ruin the thread on that. If it's too big, it will slip. So I'm looking for the Goldilocks one. Which is probably that one. So basically I'm going to try until it's definitely not that one, it's definitely not that one. So here's my Goldilocks. So just now, normal screwdriver. That's me hit the aluminium. And now it's hard work. What's gonna happen is I'll turn my hand, my hand's gonna slip on this, and it's gonna be uncomfortable. 
So this set from a car shop, using the ratchet on it. Did you see my deliberate mistake? Don't do this at home. You're not going to be able to stick the washer on after you put the screw in, you idiot, Pete. You just want that tight. You don't want it to compress it too much. You just want it tight so it's not going to come loose. Drill reversed. Pulling the strand down. Oh, note, the dowel has to be at least as long as the wig. And you always feel it when it goes through the, uh, you feel the drill as it bites through the last bit of the uh, aluminium and goes into the wood. And as soon as it goes into the wood, stop it there. There's a slight, there's a chance I'll have split the wood at the end, but that doesn't really matter. If the dowel had been the right size, perfectly the right size, I could guarantee that it wouldn't split because it's got nowhere to split to. Here's where it's going to bite in. That's cut through the aluminium and it's screwing into the wood. You never want to over tighten. If you over tighten a screw into a, a piece of wood or a piece of aluminium or anything else, what you're in danger of doing is any threads that you cut as you put it in of stripping those out so then it'll so then the screw can pop out. Because it's got nothing to grip with. Second one, third one. And once I've done the third one, I'll peel off my masking tape and then I'll go off camera and I'll do the other side. And before I actually screw the other side in, I'll show you something to help with the balance of the staff. Right, I made a mistake there. I left the drill in the drilling in position all the time and I actually got a much cleaner result. So for the guy on the internet when I was looking up and researching this who said reverse the drill to go through the care flower, you are actually wrong. Uh, 
I've now done, I've now wrapped the second side, so we've got both sides wrapped. This is going to have to be drilled and screwed in. But remember I said that what we wanted to have, we wanted to have it all nice and balanced. The first thing to help with the balance is both sides, one side are wrapped clockwise, the other side are wrapped anti-clockwise. So that the roll on it is the opposite direction. The second thing is, here I've got screws vertical, and here, unfortunately I've actually got it vertical, uh, I haven't got it correctly set up. But to demonstrate, I'm going to incorrectly set it up and then I'll correctly set it up afterwards. Now, when I started rolling this, the first thing I did was I taped the wake onto the staff. Then I rolled as tight as I could, leaving a little bit of spudginess to let some liquid in, but really tight. And then I uh, did the spiral, did the fold over so that the double side meets the double side. Now, because it's taped, I can't rotate it one way, but I can rotate it the other way and undo the tape on the inside. So now I can set this side, have the screws vertical, I just rotate this round, so it'll be the screws vertical because that's where my double is. That's where my end is, and change it 180 degrees round. Check that's at the bottom, that's at the top. So now it's in the right place. Because I rotated it one way, it's undone the tape on the inside. If I tried to pull it in the direction of the roll, the tape would hold it in place. But now it's correct. So all I have to do now is drill this, put the screws in, take the tape off, and then wrap the handle to give me a good grip. So little little break while I do that. The screwing, the putting the screws in is exactly the same as I did on the other side. So we'll come back to that. I'll come back to that as soon as I've finished. Thanks. As it is, fundamentally that's the staff built. Still gonna wrap the uh, the actual staff part of it to give me a grip. But um, just now I'm gonna take off this wonderful tape that just made my life so much easier and reveal the underlying head. Any little scraps of paper left over will burn off in your first burn anyway, so it doesn't really matter, but the prettier it can be, pretty, pretty is a good thing especially during engineering. Okay, the next part of the process is to find the centre point. Now, the normal way to find the centre point is to lay your finger, roll your finger until you find a balance point. But if you want to do it really accurate, get a piece of doweling or anything round really, and make sure that you can have both ends of the staff free and then roll the doweling and watch what happens to the ends. And just there, do this very slowly. To be honest, you don't have to do it as accurately as I'm doing it. But just there, we have the center point, which, lovely enough, is exactly where I marked the centre point on the staff in the first place. I did the same thing before I started building the staff and what this shows me is not only have I got the uh, twigs weighing exactly the same with the screws and the dowels. There, perfect balance at the point I marked it at. So next thing is going to be I'm going to... Uh, I marked it with a pen and next I'm going to put some grip on. Now, oh God, I bought a set of grips. I think it was about five sets of grips. And I did a uh, staff with uh, 
one colour, which I can't see where it is just now. I think it might have been blue. But I've got to decide, am I going to do the yellow? Am I going to do the supposedly red, which I think is pink, the black or the purple? <sighs> My goth sense says do it in black or purple. My fire sense says do it in red. My nonsense, nonsense says do it in yellow. So, let's see if I can not mess this up. When you get your tennis racket grip, it will come with the grip and a little piece of tape. And the little piece of tape is to finish the grip off at the end. Now that can be completely unrolled. I'm gonna put this there and hope I remember where it is. Also, at the end of the tape, it's not unrolled because it has a little sticky piece just here. And that's where you start to start your roll. Now you can either roll from the outside to the center, which is difficult because you need to know how long it's going to be, or from the center to the outside, which is a lot easier. And when you do both sides, you want to have both sides with the same amount of overlap. Um, I'm probably going to mess this up a bit, but I'm going to do my, my damnedest. And with this wrap if you just roll it that's fine but if you put a stretch in it it will grip to itself to a degree so if i open this i've got a little piece of plastic there peel that off it really should be at the very end quality control is not the highest when you're buying these i'm going to start find my center line and across Cross my centre line. I'm going to do it about 30 degrees. What I want is I want when I roll it round, see that's rubbish because it's not overlapping. I need it to overlap. So then down to about 15 degrees. And there I've got about a little overlap. Sorry, my paws are in the way. And I want about a third of this width overwrapping and then I want to try to keep that as consistent as I can all the way along. Thanks Facebook. I really need a ping in the background then. So I have maybe about two millimeters. I'm keeping a little bit of tension in it. Clear all the tools before you do this. It makes life a lot easier. Now some tapes have a foam ribbon in between it and that makes it so much easier. It gives you a less smooth grip but a more grippy grip because there's a layer of foam and that means you can say I will do the next wrap beside the foam of the previous wrap. I'm trying to keep this as straight as possible. I mean, everything you need in a staff, everything you want in a staff, should be as tidy as you can. I mean, it takes a little bit extra time. You could just quickly wrap it round. The tape itself is something that you could take, take off and replace. And you will replace it at some point, because at some point it'll get too dirty, too worn, or torn when you've dropped it which is something that's probably going to happen quite a lot depending on your experience with the staff I would love a machine that I could just put it in and just go and have it all perfect and this is the bit I don't like because it's hard to measure it. It's hard to make sure that it's accurate. I wonder if there'd be a way of uh, marking the tape a third down. If you had a line that you could mince on. There's little tiny dots in it which kind of could help you. 
But with the light in this room, it's probably not going to help me. So yeah, just doing it by eye. A little bit of tension in it. Try to get that flow. <laughs> yeah, there goes my golf credentials, making a yellow hand on fire, sir. Now at the end, and now I'm going to have the fun of needing an extra hand here. The finishing tape has a little bit of a paper backing to it. I'm going to make sure I cover this corner because I don't want anything which can catch and unravel it. Now what I could do is I could do this at an angle and spiral it round to give me a good clue. Okay. Try and get a better quality tape than this. I think that may be where the, it was cut through for the card, for the backing. So this piece is going to come off. It has no purpose. It is destroying my will to live, so it's gone. So that may have been where the um, where the backing paper was cut. Obviously, the machine which is cutting the backing paper is not as accurate as it could be. Control D. Yeah, because it had a very clean edge when it finished, when it tore, I'd say pretty certainly it's where the backing paper was cut. So if it comes down to the choice of using a razor blade or a really sharp knife, it's the tool which works best. Okay, so now we're at the stage. The centre part has a little rubbishy bit. I'll come back to that. That's where the two, the two pieces meet. But first of all, I'm going to use this silicon tape, which is uh, rated, I think it's silicon tape. Yes, silicon tape. It's rated to uh, 230 degrees, which is plenty, plenty tough enough. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark out from the end, probably about a few centimetres, five centimetres. And then I'll start wrapping from there and I'll wrap to here. And I'll do the same from here and wrap to here. And I'll also recheck the balance and then sort out the midpoint. Balance is still fine. Just need to sort out this piece. Do a wrap at the ends. Now if you have some good quality electrical tape, it's perfectly sufficient for marking the middle section. I'll give that a try in a minute, but first of all, 
I want to mark off these bits with our distance from the end. I want it to be nice and consistent. And five centimeters seems good. Five centimeters and I'll finish it at Finish it at 25. So my cylinder coming out will go from there and we'll go to there. Now, the silicon tape comes with a plastic layer on it, and the reason why it has a plastic layer on it is because if this is left to touch itself. What it will do is over about a day, it will actually bond itself together. It will melt into each other. And so you need a plastic tape so that when it's rolled up, it doesn't mess up. So this plastic tape, this is going to be fun because they're going to have to try and uh, roll this round without actually um, uh, taking the plastic off at the same time. Never used this before. But, you know, first time for everything. I'm using this because uh, my next project is going to be a set of nunchucks. It doesn't even feel in the slightest bit sticky. Now, with the other, as with the other tape, you want to kind of stretch this and it will stick to itself. And I'm going to take it further towards the head than where I want it to finish. I'll cut that off, cut that off afterwards. We're just doing the same thing, doing a nice overlap on it oh my gosh yeah oh gosh self-using in a day no self-using absolutely straight away no question of that okay you only get one shot of this I can't believe how well it's sticking to itself it's embarrassing I'm just wishing just now it was yellow tape because seeing the degree of overlap, I've only got a couple of minutes, so a couple of millimeters overlap. But trying to watch that black on black with direct vertical lighting is pretty tricky. But yeah, I'm loving this tape. This is, this is. Do you know what? It's got enough grip to it. I wish I'd done the whole staff with it now. I probably would turn out cheaper than buying the uh, racket tape. Oh my gosh. There's something which is going on in my head just now, which I really shouldn't say. So I won't. In fact, what else could I use this tape for? Know me. And that pirate isn't the only game we can. Right, are we past where we need to go? We'll be on this map. When you're buying this tape. I'd really seriously watch what you're buying because there's a difference. There's two tapes I've seen with the same name. One's good to 100 degrees, one's good to 230. That's centigrade. And you know what? I think there's a difference between 130 and 230. Oh. Exactly the same again, try and get the same angle.
Oh, this is the hardest bit. Doing the first start of it, the first roll of it. Because it doesn't, silicon doesn't like sticking to anything except for apparently itself. It's got a wee bit of grip there. Stretching helps a lot. I'm actually just going to take it from way before where I need it to be. I can just measure it up afterwards, give myself a nice clean finish. One of the hardest things is keeping this at the same tension because it does stretch a lot and when you're trying to keep the same neatness on it the same distance if you pull it tight you get skinny and if you get skinny then your three millimeter overlap becomes one millimeter overlap so you kind of got to try and keep it as consistent as you can i mean the whole the whole exercise of making this is all about consistency everything must be as consistent as as can be. The more time and care you spend on the staff, the more fun you're going to have with the staff later. And you know, this has probably taken about an hour to build, maybe an hour and a half to build. It'll give me months and months of months of pleasure. So, you know, if it takes if it takes twice as long to build, because you're taking care, that's kind of okay because. In your first spin, you're going to get that time repaid anyway. Oh God, I'm, I'm absolutely in love with this tape. Having never used it before, and I want to use it for everything in the whole world. And I mean everything. I've got some plumbing that I need to fix. I'm going to use this tape. Uh, that wasn't a joke, actually. Uh, this tape will actually seal a leak in your plumbing. Right, I'm going to leave a little bit extra because I, I want to make sure all my measurements are right once I've finished. So I'm going to leave a little bit of extra tape. I know it's a waste, but uh, that's gone over there, that's gone over there. Yeah. Let's take that to ten. Depending on where I am, can be shortest. That's ten and a half there in inches. That's ten in inches. So no, it's not perfect, but right before you do your last wrap. Cut the tape straight. Because I'll tell you, it sticks together so well, you're never going to be able to cut it straight if you do what I've done just now. I'll put another line of tape around there just to prick it up.
Yeah, I will be, because I don't want it, I want it to look as nice, I want it to be as good as possible, but I also want it to look as nice as possible. Being serious, this bit, you don't have to be quite as neurotic as I'm being. Unfortunately, I do have to be quite as neurotic as I'm being, for my own sake. Yeah, next one, I'm just going to use this tape. It's got a lovely feel to it, a lovely grip to it. Almost like a stickiness, but not sticky. But don't let it touch itself when you're peeling the back off. Otherwise, that's just thrown away piece of tape. So immediately, absolutely immediately, just sticks itself to itself. Okay. Now, very important. Check the balance and I'm going to mark the center point. So this is a final check. I checked before I started to see the balance on the staff. I checked once I put the weights on, the wicks on the ends and now I'm going to do exactly the same thing again and check the balance Right, the extra overlap bit, which is where the tape didn't go to the end, the sticky didn't go to the end. Now trim that back, make it nice and neat. Check again. No, don't check again, I've actually got the mark there. So that's the centre of it. Look, so next one you make, cut these ends first so they're straight because this is a pain in the ass.
finished staff, perfectly balanced staff. Nice feel to it, very happy. And this is up for sale. Oh, someone's going to enjoy this. So, yeah, thanks for watching. Nice heavy staff. Bit of a long process to build it, but it's built, it's done now. And I'm happy, I'm very happy. Ah, no, no. Sequel. I'm not happy. It's not pretty at the end. Remember I said I was going to take up, I was going to mark the ends. This isn't just for aesthetics. Having a straight cut across this means that the silicon is only touching silicon and not touching metal because it's not going to stick to the metal. So here I have had a problem because I've stuck the silicon to the silicon. Thank you. So cutting that edge straight, make sure that everything is correct. Now I'm happy. Now I'm absolutely and utterly happy. And it feels nice. It's got a nice flow to it. It's a bit heavier than a than a steel staff would be because the steel staff would be made out of much thinner wall tubing. Beautiful grip, beautiful balance. Oh my gosh, that's perfect. Wow, that was fun. Don't know how long it took. I'll find out how long it took. Then I'll do put the video on YouTube, I guess.